you know, as a teenager, I, I wanted to be a poet. And so yeah. really on my headstone, you can just put, like, failed poet. Her eyes adjusted to register the alms bowl with its crumpled bills, and then, past the door frame, a larger room, a rigid grid of mats laid out on the floor. The handful of people already in there looked normal enough from the ankle up, but the fact that they were padding around in stocking feet was almost weirder than if they'd been nude. The odor was weird, too. Toasty, but also loamy, like fish food. It was when she turned to flee that the buzzer buzzed again and two men shoved in behind her. Can you tell, can you tell us about the first piece of fiction you wrote or the first time you kind of sat down and were writing something? Yeah, there's likely to be two answers to that question for anyone you ask. So there's the, you know, the s stories that I wrote in first grade, you know, or like um, after I failed as a poet and I knew I was never going to be a poet, I wrote very bad fiction for a number of years. And then there was this moment in about October of 2001 where I sat down to write a story. And, um, you know, if you think about it, it should be clear what was in the atmosphere in October of 2001. Hmm. But all of a sudden, the story had this resonance to it. And it was like I'd been knocking around on, like, a piece of, you know, wood, just getting these shallow repercussions and then all of a sudden hitting this place where it went boom and like resonated. And was part of that kind of working out your voice, working out a kind of technical sense in which you could actually put down what you wanted to put down or was it just hitting on the right thing, hitting on the right? I actually think it, I, I don't think it's the first thing. I think it possibly has to do with um, <clears throat> these strange paradoxes that inhere in the, the kind of hoary old adage, write what you know, hmm. which is to say you could write these sort of very autobiographical things that are somehow dead because the fiction doesn't allow you to see around corners that you can't see around in real life. And you can write things that are very fantastical, but that are fictionally dead because they don't sort of partake of the subterranean stream of your life. And the fiction that's really alive is somehow pitched in this strange middle distance. What do you think the state of American fiction is right now? I personally, for me, am very interested in the question of reality on the one hand and imagination on the other. A merely real fiction, the proverbial mirror dragged along the road, like can only reflect back what's already there like mm -hmm. the, you know, the already existing world. So what's, you know, the purpose of that? Uh, you know, it's, it's a sterile Where's thing. The in it? Yeah. So the mirror has to be angled slightly to take in something that, the, you know, isn't already there. But, you know, if the mirror is like this and you get none of the world, you're just untethered. So I think the question of how these things fit together, which any number of young, younger writers I think are working on. I mean, these, the, the Knausgaard and the Rachel Cusk books yeah. have, have been very, they may have been more influential on think piece writers even than on fiction yeah. writers. Um, and then there are other people who are doing more fabulous things. Um, like I see Jesse Ball is in here. Yeah. And, you know, and how do these, how do these things fit together to enlarge our sense of like what's possible in the world, I think is, one of the really interesting questions. Well, thank you, Garth, for coming in. It's really fun to talk to you. Thank you for having me. And congratulations again on being on the list. Thanks. Yeah.